What else do we got on this thing? Fetch over WebRTC or how I started calling it don't drink and code, kids. <laughs> how would I literally not read this article? This is designed for me to love this. Okay, WebRTC is fantastic. Oh man, oh, this whole thing is great. Uh, the voices in my head tell me networking design sometimes. And when they win, I start coding and don't stop. This is the result of me having an idea while drinking with my family. <laughs> and not stopping having the idea until I was done two months later. I wonder if he also didn't stop drinking the whole way. That's the real question. That's the real question. To provide some context, I am working on a web-based TTRPG platform designed to cost me as little as possible to run and maintain so I can get away not making it a product. I could, in theory, just use the cloud and hoist it on some AWS magic server, but I am Romanian. In translation, too poor for cloud hosting. And while thinking about some of the networking problems that come from making a decentralized gaming platform, I realize that most people don't actually have public IP addresses at home. The advantages of living in Eastern Europe, I guess, and asking for one can be difficult and costly process. So in the end, having a home server is not a solution for everyone. Okay, this is great. Okay, we're great background. Great background right now. Um, thankfully, the network uh, networking nerds thought about it in the 90s. The biggest showstopper for client server hosted is the ISPs are translating your home private IP port combination into a public facing one. This combination is not static and the client typically does not know it happens. But if you can deduce it in theory, you could link two clients without uh, ha them having public static addresses. Okay, okay, very exciting. Very exciting. Uh, to achieve this, the nerds developed an entire family of standards, some which include Stun, Turn, Ice, and WebRTC. Man. Okay, so I've never done anything with uh, with Turn. Uh, I've read part of the Ice and Stun stuff, and I've, I've done a decent amount of reading into WebRTC. I've never actually implemented any of it. Whew. The latter was developed by Google, and the browsers copy-pasted into their code bases. WebRTC was originally developed for real-time communication services, but during this article, we'll be twist we our article will be twisting into a channel for HTTP and WebSocket communication. I love this. This is so good. To make a very long, stupid, and nerdy short story or story short, WebRTC creates a connection-oriented channel through which the peers are intended to communicate freely without dedicated structure. So to recreate HTTP, all we have to do is send messages and expect responses from the server. <laughs> That's it? That's all you got to do? Okay, it's that easy. There is no server. Sorry, I had to say that. WebRTC was developed for the browser, and last I checked, a browser is not a server yet. So, Node, it's basically a browser. No, sadly, no. <laughs> There's no official support for WebRTC on Node, and I refuse uh, to handcraft my packets for something that I'm not even sure will work. It's It would also be an incredible amount of work. you got to remember WebRTC, you got UDP, RTP, you got... RTCP back channel communications. You got so much crap that goes into what SDP for 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 uh, what's called um, for uh, ab abilities information transfer. Like what can I handle flag flag stuff, dude? There's so much crap that goes into WebRTC. It would be impossible to do in any short amount of time with one person that isn't an extremely experienced programmer. Um, so time to see if anyone else had the same intrusive thought. After another beer, I found a few live. <laughs> Found a few libraries to achieve the exact uh, achieve exactly that. I think I found seven to eight libraries, three of which didn't receive an update in the last five years, three that just don't work, and finally one Werift that has a work in progress documentation. So it's uh, and is in Japanese. Looks like a good time. <laughs> you know, you know for a fact you 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 are in the truest rabbit hole. When your only when your only options are work in work in progress documentation and it's in Japanese, like you are in a you are in a in a good place right now. Hey there, Hef. I'll call the pain of existence, but man, does it make you do some good, crazy good shit? It does. Uh, one one other problem. I wanted to uh, use Peer JS because allegedly that's how you do WebRTC or something. I was very drunk by this point, so don't question my logic. This library again has no support for Node, but luck was on my side. Apparently, someone by the name of Afro Kick made a merge request for a 2.0 beta for PeerJS two years ago that should work on Node. They were even kind enough to leave behind an example. Thanks, Afro Kick. <laughs> First off, can we get some uh, can we get some claps for Afro Kick? What a good guy. What a good guy. Just coming in there, 
leaving exactly what this man needs. Just just absolutely a great, just a great thing right there. Shout out to Afro Kick. Can we shout out Afro Kick? You know, I know this isn't the same Afro Kick, but you know what? Afro Kick, whoever you are, you're getting a sh- you're getting a shout out. Whoever you are, good job. And I'm gonna give you a follow. Whoever you are. Not even the same one, but it's it's the it's the spirit that counts. All right. They were even kind enough to leave behind an example. Thanks, AfroKick. Sadly, it uses one of the libraries that I tested and didn't seem to work. But uh, if the WeRift library is real and the WebRTC implementation is mostly accurate, I could use it in place of WebRTC and hope it works. Okay, spoiler alert. It mostly works. It's horrible and required me to make some changes. Uh, changes pure JS. I have no idea what I want to change. Or I have no idea what I changed. It was something about the message sending part, but it works. Okay. Nice. Back to normality with WebRC on Node working. All I have to do, all I have to figure out is how do I put this dumpster fire in its own box so I don't have to look at it again. Okay, I like it. Simple. Make a WebRTC server, smuggle the data into a real server, and back to the unfortunate souls using the house of cards. Those poor, the, the poor, the poor, the poor unfortunate souls. All I have to do is mock the HTTP parameters and structure in a way that my proxy will be able to format and forward it to a real server and convert that response back to my stupid messaging system to send it to the client. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, it's just an adapter layer, right? You're just, you're literally just recreating uh, HTTP over uh, UDP. That shouldn't be like, I mean, and WebRTC has reliability built in, correct? So therefore, I mean, that should make. Most inventions are not a necessity. You know, the necessity may be something else here that we're missing, okay? The necessity might be the need to go to treatment for drinking alcohol. So we don't know what it is, but we do know that at the end of the day, somebody made this. Images. Oh, God, people send images over the internet, and I'm making a JSON-based messaging protocol. Okay, why would you use WebRC just to end with JSON? You didn't even hand roll your own your your own your own encoding format don't worry about it how would a normal person send images over a json messaging format you don't well you'd probably x60 what was you get base 64 it uh, but at this point i'm not stopping so fuck it base 64 <laughs> pre read <laughs> pre-read that one, the images, and make a mockery out of the multi-form uh, data structure as well, and put them in the JSON and sent it. Wait, why are my requests not reaching my client? Apparently, even though SCTP, the protocol used for sending reliable data, supports message fragmentation, most browsers cannot be asked to implement that part. Existence is pain. <laughs> That means you're going to have to do it. So I have to make my own fragmentation and reassembly mechanism in JavaScript. Don't worry about it. It's really not that bad. If you already had the incoming things, you already knew it was a, uh, like, I mean, you really didn't even have to, I mean, you really could just use a one byte identifier in front of the message to say what type of message it is, whether it's JSON or image. And then you could just dump the image wholeheartedly, whole binarily, raw dog it across the internet, read the first byte and say first byte equals image. And it's this long, the next two bytes, three bytes, four bytes, whatever you need for the next part is just how long it's going to be. Probably toss a version at the very beginning just so you can version your protocol. Bada bing, bada boom, you got yourself a delicious versioned protocol that takes in length and type of message. And you, like that's it. That's all you got to do. It's that easy. That's how most games do it. Of course they do. They have a version. They have a, they have a version. They have a type. And then they have a length. And bada bing, you just got done making yourself a protocol. Uh, this reminds me of a smart guy that said, always put a version in your protocol header. Yeah. Probably a smart and good looking fella, if we're honest with ourselves. So I have to make my own fragmentation reassembly mechanism in JavaScript. Don't worry about it. When I came up with take my message, convert it to binary, slice into 16K parts, convert the binary back to text. Yes, we can, uh, we can still only send text. I mean, can you? I mean, text is binary. Why can you only send text? I'm cu- I'm curious about that last part. Make a J. Let's see. Make a J. Oh, is it because you're only using JSON? Okay, yeah. Never mind. For whatever reason, my suggestion for how the protocol should go became how the protocol should go. <laughs> we do all this. Hope the client can re- can somehow reassemble mess. You already have array buffers. Again, dude. Imagine if you would have listened to me 
it's in the past, in the future, and put a, a version in your header protocol, of course. But then after that, put a length to your message. You could have allocated an array buffer, right? That's like JavaScript, right? I can jump in here, and I can jump in here, and uh, I can go like this. I can go const a equals new array buffer, right? And I can do like 1024, and like bada bing, bada boom, and now I got myself one of those. And then you can have a const view, and the view can simply be like a, a new uint8 array that references the underlying array buffer. Now you can be like... You know, view dot set or whatever it is. Get what? What the hell? What the hell does view do again? Oh yeah, it's just a U eight in buffer. You can set that to like one, and then I can print a, and a has this huge thing, but a also now has this beautiful little int eight buffer. At there you go, it has a one on it because we we're editing it with a view. Like that's all you gotta do, baby. Just write it in. Just write. Just write it in. All right. Conclusion. What was the point of this article? To rant mostly and to tell any unfortunate soul that wants to do WebRTC things, please read the original RFCs. Most articles I found on the subject sucked, and I would have saved so much time uh, if I had read the original standards first. Here's a link to, uh, to them for your convenience. Mm. Mm. I was hoping for a little bit more to this to this article. I think it's hilarious that you used WebRTC just to use JSON. Like what, what? What? What was your goal here? What's the goal? What's the goal here, people? You can't do that. Makes me a little sad. I wanted to see something out of it, like some sort of performance or some sort of something out of it. Okay, because 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 it sounds exciting. Okay, session uh, traversal utilities for a NAT. I've never done anything with Stun. I know that this is a thing. I lightly read it at one point. It is like RFCs are not small, by the way. Okay, they are not exciting to read. Anyways. What the heck is PeerJS? Who knows what PeerJS? Okay, well, this is awesome. I, lo I, love, I love just the ridiculous nature of this, by the way. This is just how you up-level yourself so much as an engineer. Please, if there's one thing I can convince you of is do something that you just don't think you can do other than traveling salesman or any problem that can be uh, uh, reworked into the traveling salesman. Pick a problem that you just don't think you can do and do it. If you've never built RTP, try building RTP. Why not? If you've never parsed out ANSI and codes to make a to, to to turn them into to binary that you can send to a server and thus deliver to a bunch of people at once, you know why not? Why not? Just pick something and do it. No matter. Talk to a woman. Get crazy out there, jet ski. You know, do what you gotta do. Not because you must, but because you can. I might as well touch grass then. Okay, now we're getting a little too crazy here. Okay. Okay. Uh, did you just expose me? I did. <laughs> You know, create your own uh, protocol for socket communication. Why not? Like, if you want to learn how something works or you want to understand something at a more fundamental level, you have to build it, right? You know, something that you could do is try to build your own minor version of GitHub, right? Git is just decentralized. That's all it is, is a decentralized version control system. That's it. Like, that's it. There's nothing else to it. GitHub is just someone else's machine running your Git. Now, obviously, there's a whole bunch of stuff that goes on between it but nonetheless it, it that's all it is in, at the end of the day you know what i mean uh reinventing the wheel is super valuable and you really know why the wheel is so great exactly the name is the primogen